How's it going everyone? This is James from James Films. I'm so excited to be joining you again for a little mini tutorial of a new add-on that is now just available over on the Blender Market. With this project, you get a free starter scene that I put together for you using a really cool landscape design that I created over in World Creator textured it over there, then brought it over here into Blender. If you want to learn a bit more about how to create scenes in World Creator with Blender, check out the description. I've got a link to a tutorial I made a couple weeks ago. A lot of fun. Also, I release pretty regularly a lot of my scenes, including World Creator textures, over on my Patreon. So check that in the description as well. So for today, the focus is not on necessarily scene creation, but it is focused on lighting design. Lighting design. Lighting is essential for obviously day-to-day -day life, but also for our Blender renders as well, to really make them look special, to give them that extra edge, and really just you know showcase all that hard work you put together, texturing, modeling, everything. You wanna show that off, you gotta do some really proper lighting to make it really come through for you. So. Lucky for us today, we've got the True Sky add-on from the creators over at True VFX. And actually for the next couple of weeks, you can get this add-on for a discounted rate, 15% off using the code TRAILYSKY in the description. Check that out, show them some love. And then once you have this add-on installed, fire a blender and we can get to creating the scene. So for today, you can also check out in the bottom left corner of your screen here, the uh, keys and, and buttons that I'm gonna be pressing as well to go through here. Everything is super simple and actually slider based for this uh, add-on. So not a lot of really complex shortcuts and stuff to put this together. So don't worry too much about that. It's gonna be really easy, almost like as if we're working in Photoshop or something. So let's have a lot of fun with this add-on. So with the starter scene, like I said, you get the camera angle set up here. You get your uh, world creator scene, which I actually already have applied a mountainous texture to. So all of that's already set up for you, like I said. And the one thing about True Sky compared to other add-ons like Physical Starlight and Atmosphere is that currently it only works in Cycles with uh, the render engine Cycles because uh, it's going to be using a lot of very intensive volumetrics. And so that's one thing to note as you start to kind of work with this add-on. It might slow your system down a little bit. Don't worry. There are ways to kind of combat that a little bit. Uh, it comes with this little drop down here at the top, volume presets, and allows you to kind of choose a different setting based on how intensive your system is working here. You can go with fastest, which I typically kind of rest with while I'm working in the viewport, just so I'm not you know, bogging down my renders too much. And then once you're ready to actually render stuff out, you can kick it up to the highest. This is the same deal as kind of like checking and unchecking a subdivision surface modifier while you're working on your scene and then checking that back on once you're ready to render. It's just a, a way to kind of optimize a little bit as you're working through here. So. For starters, I've actually added in a sun here just for when you download it so that you can actually kind of preview the scene. But we actually don't need this because this add-on will come pre-packaged with everything we need to use. So to use this add-on, you just click on Use True Sky and it will load this up into your world texture. So if I go over to world, you've got everything plugged in here now for our uh, world scene. I actually had an HDRI plugged in there before, so let me just actually remove that. All we need is this true VFX uh, true sky node set up here. If I click this over to the rendered mode, this will take just a second to you know, process everything for us. It will show you what we're working with here. And so this is kind of the, the base startup file that you get with true sky. But what's great about it is it comes with a bunch of just ready to go scene uh, lighting setups here. If you just click on this little drop down, you can go and select from a variety of different settings. I've, I've found myself gravitating quite a bit to these two different dusk ones here, as well as the morning one. Uh, just because you get a really interesting, almost like vapor wave kind of sunset sunrise effect here with the really beautiful purples and oranges and reds in here, you know, with just one click. So I, I literally just clicked this once. We're almost ready to render this out. Obviously, it's a little bit dark here in the foreground, but to move this around, you've got the option of changing your sun's uh, height as well as the rotation. And so if I just kind of spin this around, you can see this kind of flips around in my scene here so that it's now kind of coming through in the foreground a bit more. You can see we're starting to get some more shadows. You know, maybe I pull up the height a little bit here. So now we can actually see that beautiful texture, that beautiful detail that we have, you know, as you can see here in, in the viewport. So a lot of really nice detail. I want that to come through with the render. 
So I've kind of moved this around so that my shadows are really nicely influencing that. And we've got a, already, with just a couple clicks, a scene that looks great. <laughs> so what I encourage you to do with this add-on, and this is why I've set up a starter scene for you, is to really just have some fun playing around with these sliders. See what they do. Each one has a very drastic effect I've found on the overall look and feel of your scene, especially when you go down to this true haze, true fog here. If I kind of pull this over a little bit more, you can see there's a lot of different settings here and actually different colors that you can also change. You can also uncheck these if you don't want to use haze or fog, for example, and kind of see how this impacts your render. With anything in Blender, this is something I stress a lot with my tutorials. I want you to take the time to really just go through and explore the add-on, have fun with it, see what it does, see how it influences your scene, and just play around. You know, not necessarily follow step by step, especially for this one. You know, for this one, I will be creating something a little bit step by step here to get to uh, kind of a final result, if you will, to render out. But you know, for your own projects, I encourage you to just take the time to go through and, and really make it your own. You know, have some fun with it. Change the camera angle even if you want to. Um, so. I'm just gonna play around a little bit with some of these other settings just to show you. So that's just to change the height and rotation, just to you know get your scene looking a little less dark here. So if we're kind of just seeing you know uh, sh everything in shadow, we want this to kind of have a bit more detail. That's the first place I would go, height and uh, rotation. If it's a little bit too dark still, you can also up the intensity of your sun too, but be careful because this can very quickly overload and blow out your scene. Uh, you know, Keeping everything very subtle here, maybe I'll just bump up the intensity to something like four instead and kind of see what this does as well. You can also change the sun sky, uh, sun size rather. And then what is also interesting, if you're making a planet like Tatooine or something where you've got a binary star system, you can actually enable that here too and, and actually use two suns to kind of influence your scene as well. So that's an interesting thing uh, to do uh, there too. You can also change the sky strength here. You can see what that's doing. So if I kind of pull this back down, it's almost more of like a night mode thing here. Um, one difference I found with this versus a physical starlight atmosphere is uh, in physical starlight atmosphere, they've worked on making actually procedural stars too. So I've had a lot of fun kind of implementing that. I see that for this one, they haven't put in the stars yet, but this is a, a simple thing to do if you're just doing some compositing in After Effects or, or Photoshop. You can just you know throw in a, a star texture on top of your sky. This just gives you a really nice starting base. You can see I'm really liking this kind of orangish, deep blues, purples. Uh, that we're getting in the background there. It's really, really nice. So I'm just gonna up that a little bit more here. And so we've got a really great base. And um, before I kind of touch the true haze and true fog here, I'm actually gonna go over here and enable the use clouds uh, in here for the true sky, true uh, world here as well. And what's great about this, and this is, I, I feel, the biggest strength of this add-on that I've found so far, is the customizability of your clouds, which also gives you the chance to make time lapses. This is something I've wanted to do in Blender forever. I've started to animate a lot more of my scenes, and if you haven't seen this already, you can check out my Instagram, at James underscore films. I've started to post a lot more of my animated scenes over there. Been having a lot of fun, but I, I've been struggling with animating clouds or finding a solution to animate clouds without completely blowing up my machine. You know, we're using volumetrics uh, for a lot of stuff. I've, I've kind of experimented with using video overlays, and I'll, I'll make a tutorial about how I animate some stuff in After Effects in, in a couple weeks too, talking a bit more about how I use some video overlays and kind of map them to my scenes there uh, for those final renders. But I kind of want to do stuff as much as possible within Blender so that, you know, when it renders out, it's as close to the final result as possible. I don't need to do too much additional work to get it to where I really want it to be. So I've been looking for that solution and I think I found what I'm looking for with this add-on. You can see on the screen now an example from their product page of a time-lapse here. And it's pretty believable for the most part. I think the one thing that would make it a slight bit more believable, and maybe this is gonna come in an additional iteration of the software, is if there was a little bit more kind of change to the clouds so they didn't just stay the same exact shape. Because if you look at a real time-lapse of clouds, and I can put that up here now for you to see. You can see clouds kind of change shape and form. There's you know evaporation, condensation that's going on, where you know they're kind of you know changing size, they're maybe getting larger, shrinking away as they kind of you know like kind of rain out some of their uh, moisture and kind of change shape. So this one in this add-on, it looks pretty good to start out with, but there's that kind of static nature of the clouds. If it was just a little bit more dynamic, which is tough to do, you know, it's not an easy thing to do. And this add-on has gotten as close as possible, I think, to photorealism with the cloud movement, um, while, you know, still maintaining uh, some really cool flexibility for your customizability to here. And so I can show you here in the add-on, if I click on this dropdown, right now it's defaulted to the Strato Cumulus, which is this uh, last preset here. 
But you can also mess around with a, a couple other different uh, cloud structures as well too. And there's a, quite a few settings to change here as well with the cloud amount density. You can kind of soften your clouds up a bit. I found myself really gravitating towards this Camilo Nimbus. If you don't know too much about different cloud types, don't worry, they show you a nice useful uh, thumbnail here for you to kind of understand what they would look like, you know, in your scene hypothetically. And once you add them in, it's not always immediately clear uh, how they'll look just because for this one, it's, it's a pretty hazy background, as you can see here. You know, I might need to mess around a little bit with some of these parameters here to kind of uh, showcase that sky just a little bit more. Maybe we turn down the dust just a little bit so we can see the sky. The ozone layer, maybe we kind of shrink this up or down, kind of change it. And maybe now this is where I go over to the true haze uh, here too, just to kind of see how this works. And then kind of modify some stuff in here just to get to a little bit more visibility with those clouds in the background. It's still looking quite yellow there. Um, let's kind of change some stuff up here, just mess around. Okay, there we go. Now we're getting a little bit more kind of upping that air quality. We can start to see those clouds a bit more in the background, which is looking really nice. And what you'll notice also as well, I have the uh, denoising turned on for the viewport and I encourage you to do this. Obviously it's smoothing out our scene a little bit so we're not getting all the detail from these clouds. Um, also, let me just turn on uh, fastest mode here so we can actually see stuff, you know, rendering a little bit more. And now you're starting to see those clouds much better. Um, so again, just kind of play around with these settings here if, if stuff is getting a little bit blown out. Um, you can also change uh, this distance from camera fall off, which if I pull this all the way down to zero, you can see just how dusty that looks. This is the true fog that we're changing here. It's really uh, that fall off with volumetrics is really starting close to the camera. So almost immediately it's getting very dusty, very hazy. Looks really cool. We can also just move that all the way out to the extreme so that fall off is not until way out there. And now we have almost no fog in our scene. So this is if you're just in a, you know, a kind of a dustless scene uh, looking out there. So I, I like to have a little bit of that dust, maybe kind of towards like, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. And they can also change the scattering a little bit too to adjust this. If I turn this all the way down to zero, we have no scattering. So you can very easily see our clouds here. And if we were trying to make some modifications with the clouds, this is maybe what we want to enable to start out with. And I really like how these clouds are looking. I kind of want to have maybe a bit more of them. So if I turn the cloud amount up, you know, we're kind of framing our scene a bit more here. I, I do like having some of those blues and purples from the sky kind of peeking through in the background. So I can kind of just play around with this. And you can see just how quick that changes. If I just, you know, move by a 0.1, a tenth, you know, of a place here, it already very quickly changes the overall look of our scene. I like how this is framing our mountains. Maybe I'll kind of, you know, up the density just a slight little bit there. Soften the clouds up slightly. And then also they're a little bit low and maybe you want to move them up a bit. So we can also kind of change uh, the cloud altitude or, or kind of the Z here, you know, change their evaporation. There's even an advanced tab here, which you can do even more modifications with the clouds. So just this is what I, I really like about this add on versus other ones I've tried is just the flexibility with adjusting these clouds and getting them to look so believable too. It just almost to me looks like kind of like painted. It's really beautiful, especially for this uh, particular setting that I have on here, the kind of uh, hazy, dusty dusk sky. It really looks awesome just with a couple of clicks. We've got a really awesome looking scene here. Uh, so you can do just a lot of different things here. There's even like a evaporation animation uh, setting. You can change the cloud height. So I, I, I like to move these up usually just a little bit above my mountains in the foreground. And that looks awesome to me. So maybe I'll go back here. And like I said, this is where I want you to be experimenting. A lot of push and pull here. We're back in the true haze and true fog. I might, you know, change these up just a little bit. Add a little bit more haze in here now that we're getting kind of closer to our final scene, maybe up the scattering just a little bit. Maybe we'll change the color so this is like a little bit bluer uh, for that, for the fog as well. Uh, maybe change the horizon color too, so we're kind of near like a, a more of a nighttime type of sky. Maybe drop the intensity just a hair and then, you know, maybe change the rotation slightly so that this is a little bit more kind of shadowy nighttime scene. And that's looking awesome. I mean, just with a couple clicks, great sky here. So let's talk about the last aspect of true sky, which I have really enjoyed experimenting with too, just to add that extra little touch of haze, of fog to my scenes. Um, a lot of this stuff I, I had been doing over in uh, Photoshop or After Effects, kind of adding in using some brushes or other overlays of smoke and, and things like that, uh, adding haze and dust and stuff to my scenes over there. But again, doing as much of this in, as possible in Blender is, is really awesome. So to add in this fog, you got to select the layer you kind of want to add it to here. So I'm going to uh, click on my mountain layer 
and then you click on this drop down. You have two types of fog. I've been using, for the most part, the surface fog. I felt like that one has the best result. The, the rolling fog seems to work uh, more so on the larger scale, I've noticed. Uh, and so what I'll do is I'll click on surface fog. And if I uh, pull over here on the, on the viewport, you can see what that's done. It's added in this like massive cube um, that if I just really crank this density up so you see what it's doing, um, it, it's adding in kind of this patchy fog into the scene. Um, if I turn down the fog patches all the way uh, so you can see what this is, I can move it up and down. It's effectively adding in this just really interesting blocky layer of fog to the scene. And just like when I add in any volumetrics in Blender, I tend to like over to go over to the viewport display and then make it just a, a wire so that I can actually still see my scene and see where it's impacting. If I turn up these fog patches again, you can see what this is doing. It just adds like kind of a, a subtle little dustiness to the scene. And I can kind of pull this up again a bit more. And this kind of just adds for me a little bit of highlights and, and kind of dodge and burn almost to different parts of the scene to highlight more detail. So it, everything doesn't look completely uniform. And this is something I've talked about in other videos relating to photorealism in the past. You know, anything to break up that, that perfection of scenes. It's very easy to make your renders look too good, right? It, you don't want them to look too real or too, you know, perfect straight edges, perfect solid colors. You know, adding just subtle imperfections in there really enhances the believability of your scenes. And I've really enjoyed kind of adding this in here too, just to take away just a slight bit of that perfection, you know, make it a little bit more, you know, dusty and imperfect. So that's what this is adding in here too. So just a little bit of that detail goes a long way. You don't need to kind of go overboard with this. I've just added a slight bit. And if I just turn this on and off, you can see it's incredibly subtle but really just takes it an extra step and, and looks awesome. So just with a couple clicks, a really great scene here uh, with this add-on, just a lot of fun to mess around with and, and light it. And you know, another option for you, a very affordable one at that. Again, there's the code in the description. Uh, Traley's got to get this for a reduced rate too for the first couple of weeks that it's out. Um, a really great addition to your tool set I found. So just, I've had a lot of fun experimenting around with this. I hope you enjoy, uh, if you do pick this up as well, playing around with it. Uh, I'd love to see the scenes you create. I really think it gives this really cool painterly effect uh, to your renders. And I, I posted uh, the other day uh, a new uh, render with this add-on actually using it for the sky. And I love the results I got from it. So definitely gonna be adding this to some other projects as well going forward. And uh, so if you wanna see more of those, be sure to subscribe. You can check out some of these project files that have released world creator textures and whatnot over on my Patreon. And as always, check out my Instagram at James underscore films for any updates too. Thank you so much for tuning in and I can't wait to see you on the next one.